When it comes to adding new users to your WordPress website, there are a number of different user roles that you can choose from. These user roles give different people different levels of access to your website and its content. In this WordPress video, we'll have a look at five different user roles that you'll likely see when setting up your WordPress website. Now, before we even get to the different user roles, we will need to know how to set up a new user to begin with. So once you're in WordPress, head on over to users and hit add new user. This is going to take you to the add new user screen where you can add things like a username and email address. You can fill in the first and last name fields if you'd like, however, it is optional. You can add the user's website and then generate a password for them. Leaving this part checked off will notify the user that they have a new account on your website. So you can leave that selected if you'd like. And then down at the very bottom here, we have the five different roles that I mentioned earlier. So we have subscriber, contributor, author, editor, and administrator. So what do each of these WordPress user roles actually mean and which is the best for the user that you're setting up? If we start off with the highest level of permission, that's going to bring us to the administrator role. When you assign someone the administrator role, again, you are giving them the highest level of permission, which basically allows them to access everything on the website. Because the administrator role does give someone access to basically everything, you want to make sure of a few things. For starters, you want this person to be very trustworthy. You're essentially handing over the keys to your website and they can basically do whatever they want with it. On top of that, they do need to be tech savvy and kind of know their way around a WordPress backend. The last thing you want is to give someone the administrator role and have them accidentally delete something or ruin part of the website. So what do I mean when I say an administrator basically has access to everything? The administrator level can add new users, remove users, and change user roles, including giving other people administrator roles as well. They can do ordinary things like create, edit, and publish posts and pages, but they also have the ability to play around with the website settings, adding and removing plugins, themes and theme customizations, including editing code found within the WordPress site files. As you can see, the administrator role is a pretty big one, so you want to make sure that you're making the right decision before just giving it out to anybody. Next up, we'll have a look at the editor role found within WordPress. Now, this one is pretty self-explanatory in that the person is able to edit a bunch of different types of content. With the editor role, you are giving them access to all posts and pages, not only their own, but other people's as well. And they can also do things like reply to comments, set tags and categories within blog posts, and upload media. Next up, we have author, which is kind of similar to an editor, but it's definitely restricted in some areas. An author has the ability to create, edit, publish, and delete blog posts, but only blog posts that belong to them. So they can't actually touch anyone else's blog posts, and they also can't touch any pages whatsoever. So while they can create blog posts, they can't create pages at all. When working on a blog post, an author does have the ability to add things like files and images into their blog post. So let's say someone wanted to upload a PDF file for download, they could do that. They could also add a bunch of different images to the blog post or embed videos as well. Moving further down the list, we have contributor. Now contributor is kind of like author, but it obviously has way less permission. Contributors can create and edit their blog posts, but they do not have the ability to publish them. They do need to have an administrator kind of come through and approve it and then publish it. And even when working on their blog posts, they do not have the ability to upload files or images like an author does. One final thing to note with a contributor is that once an administrator does publish their work, the contributor can no longer edit the blog post. Once the blog post is live, the contributor is credited for the work. So while the administrator does publish it, the post author on file and what readers will see will be the contributor's name. So last and technically least based on permissions and level of access is subscribers. These are people who are subscribed to your site and its updates. Whether it be through their email inbox or a reader app, subscribers can stay up to date with your website's posts. Thankfully and rightfully so, subscribers don't have any actual editing privileges when it comes to your website. All they can really do is leave comments and read your content. And even with comments, it's only if you've enabled them. So that's it when it comes to the five main user roles found within WordPress. Now, if you see other user roles when setting up a new user, it could be due to a plugin that you're using, but these five are the main ones you're going to see when setting up a WordPress website for the first time. For step-by-step -step WordPress tutorials, definitely check out eStoreKings.com and be sure to subscribe to the eStoreKings YouTube channel.